this service is going to be a, 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 an opportunity for us to worship and to pray and to hear God's word for us. Uh, two words came to mind. I'll be totally honest and transparent with you that as of this morning that I, I was awake most of the night still struggling with what, what, I, what God wanted me to share with you today. I had what I wanted to share, but what God wanted me to share was kind of veering off a different direction, you know, and that's, um, that's hard when, you, when you, like you're selfish, you know, and you're like, wait, this is what I want to do, right? Anybody ever done that with God? wait, this is what I want to do. And he's pulling you off in a, in a different direction because you don't know. You don't know what's down that path. We're always hesitant, aren't we? And so I, I came in this morning still praying and still fighting. And, and, yeah, but I, I, you know, but there are two words that I, that I had that I, I, I knew that I needed to share with you, and the, and the two words are connected, and they are hope and prayer, right? They are hope and prayer because we need to be reminded that as God's people, we have hope. Despite what's going on around us, we have hope. And, and our hope is directly connected to what? Prayer. Prayer, hope, and prayer. It's our time to shine. Amen? Hope and prayer. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking and, 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 and teaching intermittently and sharing a lot of scripture with you this morning uh, on hope and prayer just to remind you that we have an opportunity to be the hope that people are looking for. And remind them that it's directly connected to prayer, right? So, so what's going to look different here, uh, as as most of you know, or you've heard already, is that we have uh, uh, we have eliminated some gatherings, and this is the only one at this point that will be taking place. There will be no Wednesday evening uh, ministries, and until further notice, and there will be no more. There will be no Sunday school until further notice. And we uh, are, we'll monitor that on a daily basis. And we're getting our information uh, from, from the general church. And we're getting our information from, uh, from medical personnel to the, to the best of our ability. And, and then we're meeting as a safety team. Your health and wellness is important to us because we value you. Because God loves you. And so we're just trying to do our best, okay? No one's perfect at this because no, it's, these are unprecedented times for, for all of us, right? And so no one's perfect. It's important for us to be kind. Amen? It's important for us to not be critical and judgmental, e even of other churches that have made decisions to cancel and to just take a break. We need to be kind and understanding. I, I've, seen, I've already seen in social media... It, can be good or bad, right? But I've already seen people who, who are Christians criticizing pastors because they canceled their churches. You know, that's not for us. We need to be kind and understanding and trust that those pastors know and they've prayed it out and they know what's best for their church and their community. And we don't know if, if we may get to that point. We... we, we um, Met yesterday with the safety team. We covered a lot of things, and we decided to do this today. All right. Our, our offering time, and we've made changes. As you know, you weren't handed a bulletin when you came in. You were instructed to pick it up. The, uh, there were no cookies when you came in. So by the time the service is over, everybody's going to be starved and want to just run out of here, right? <laughs> be the first one to the restaurant. Yeah. So um, the uh, offering time. Uh, our ushers will not be coming to you and passing the plates. The, the offering plates will be at the back, and you, we encourage you to participate just like you normally would, right? Just like the plate was coming down your aisle, we encourage you to participate. And uh, it's, uh, if you're a guest with us, we're so glad you're here. You're not obligated. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, just, you know, don't unless God speaks to you. Uh, but 
They're at the back, and we encourage you during the course of, of worship and the service to get up on your own and go to the back. The plates are at the back on either side of the, of the sound booth and just drop your, your tithes and offerings in your envelope in, in those plates, all right? So uh, there were uh, other things that, that we talked about, but I think that's, that's it in regards to um, how if, uh, this is going to affect our service planning, okay? Um, we've been praying a lot for the church, for the community, for the country. The, uh, this has been designated as a national day of prayer. We're going to spend some time in prayer today. I was led to, to 1 Peter chapter 4, and um, it says, The end of all things is near, therefore be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Hmm. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verses 14 and 15, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Good, amen. That's good. So today, what I encourage you to do is is to just participate. He's done great things. So the worship band is going to continue to to lead us. I am going to intermittently share some scripture and some thoughts on on hope and prayer. And I just ask you to open your hearts and your minds to be led by the Holy Spirit. And then he will do great things here, right? Father, we thank you for this time that that we have to gather. We invite your presence here, but we don't need to because we know that as we walk in this room, it is filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, would you move in this place? Would you move in our hearts and our minds? Would you move throughout this room, throughout these aisles? Would you nudge your people? Would you encourage us to offer hope and then to directly connect it back to prayer? And would you encourage us to shine? to shine in, in, in this community, to shine in the lives of people. And that's what you've called the church to be. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You can always stay connected to us through, through Facebook. You'll be getting information in regards to decisions that are made in the future. We'll be sending out emails, so stay connected that way. If you've missed something, please call the church. I would, I would encourage you, before, before we move on out of here, I would encourage you to serve, to serve. We have, you look around the room, we have a lot of folks that are out because they've heard from me and said, listen, if you're, if you're over a certain age, please stay out. Don't, don't, don't come, don't. Those are the most, that age group is the most susceptible. And so they've heard that from me, so we have people out, but, and then we have other people where they're, they may be under that age, but their immune system has been compromised when they have health issues, and, and, uh, and I've talked to many people that are in that category as well. So they need your prayer, and they need us to check on them, right? You know who they are, and if you don't know who they are, call the church, reach out to me, Reach out to Pastor James, to Don, call the church office, and we can let you know what folks need. But call people and say, what, you know, what, can, we do to you? what can we do for you? you know, we talked yesterday with the safety team about some, some ideas that, that we're going to be releasing some information in the coming days about some things that, that we can do as a church, as, as a family. So we reach not only our folks that are not here today, but be that light that shines in our community. All right? So open yourself up to the possibility because if we, if, if we hide ourselves, then we can't be a light, right? Right? 
I need your prayers. As you know, I have health issues myself, so I need your prayers as well. So be praying for, for us. Be praying for Pastor James and, and just for the church in general. That every decision we make will, will be led not by us, but will be led by God. Amen? All right. Everybody good? Don't forget, ushers will not be coming to you. So anytime God speaks to you during the service, just get up and go to the back. You'll find the offering plates back there. All right. Would you stand again? You know, if you are, oh, if you are willing to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit into your life today, and you understand the connection between hope and prayer, our prayer time is going to look different today. Our prayer time is ongoing, free-flowing. I encourage you to step out and come and pray uh, at the altar. It's, if, you, if you can't kneel, sit at the front row. If you have a specific prayer request that's personal that you would like you would like me to pray with you and for you, just come up and, and, and let me know, okay? Just come up and let, you know, let me know. But would you do that? So there will not be a specific time where I say, okay, it's time to pray. Because it's always time to pray, amen? It's always time to pray. So would you just come, let's begin with this next song. With this next song, as God speaks to you, as he nudges you, as he tugs at your heart, would you just come and pray? And you can come and go. You don't have to just come and pray and get up and, that's, and, and then just say, okay, that's done, I've prayed. That's not what he's looking for and that's not the invitation. We have So many things to pray for. It's declared a national day of prayer. We need to be in prayer, obviously, for our church, for our pastors, for our schools, for our community leaders, public health departments, hospitals, medical personnel, the president, Congress, Senate, the leadership of our country. I think about everybody who's making decisions from, from school administrators to hospital administrators to business leaders to pastors. They need your prayer. Because we live in a critical world, don't we? It's always easy. When we see or hear something we don't like or agree with, to draw that criticism, the first thing. Let's reverse that. Let's be a light. Let's be kind. Let's be understanding. Let's be people that pray. Sound good? Listen. This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <laughs> We're on an unknown road, folks. But don't you love that promise? The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. As the team begins to lead us, this is, so prayer time begins now. Just like offering begins now, and it continues throughout the remainder of the service. And I don't care if I'm up here speaking, if God speaks to you and says, I want you to go pray for someone or, or uh, some family or the church or some organization or some school or some hospital or some doctor or some nurse, and, and, and I'm speaking, you come pray, all right? 
If they're playing, you come pray. And I understand that we're attempting this. We're being streamed live on Facebook. So if there's anybody out there watching, I encourage you to do the same. Know that we're praying for you. And we encourage you to pray for us in your homes today. Let's go. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's worship. Oh, he is here in this place, isn't he? He is here in this place. Amen. Amen. We can all say, I went to church and church broke out. Amen. Oh, God is so good. Great things happen when we're obedient and we put our trust in God our Father. I, I, I read by an author by the name of Martha Nobel, and she wrote about, uh, she was writing about hope, and she said, on the way to work, I saw these words written on a sign at a local church, hope is real. Hope is real. And she says, I thought about it, and I agreed with the statement, but as I pondered that simple little phrase, I realized that for many people, hope is not real. Hmm. Aren't you glad we don't live in a world where hope is not real? As believers, as believers, we know hope is real. Amen? I believe this is one of the most important gifts that we can give to another person, is the gift of hope, and then connect it to prayer. Amen? I'm going to invite you. You can, I forgot to tell you, you can be seated, you can stand, you could come to the altar, you can do whatever God leads you to do during this time. I just encourage you to worship and to pray. I have found at every crisis time in my life, the thing that got me through that crisis moment was to worship and to pray and to be in his word. Those three things right? And then to be the light for others. He is the light in a dark world. Children, would you come? I'm going to invite my, my wife is going to come up and pray for you. With all children that are in, would you just come up and join Miss Robin? That song, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, wow, that's cool. That's who we, that's who we worship. He, our God is a Waymaker, a Miracle Worker. And even when it's hard at school, God's got it for us if you guys trust him. Let's pray that God will just strengthen you to trust him, okay? And hey, you're lucky. You don't have to go to school for three weeks, right? I know. Work hard at home. I still have to go to school and work without you. How's that going to work? It's not going to be any fun. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these wonderful children. Thank you so much for who you have created them to be. They are gifted and they are talented and they are strong and they are, they are growing and they are hungry for you. And Lord, I just pray your blessing upon each one of them. I pray right now that they will be encouraged about who you've made them to be. And even when the the other kids don't say kind things, Lord. I pray that you will give them a strength inside them to be kind and to be Christ-like. I pray that you will give them a, a strength inside to stand tall for Jesus and that they will recognize and they will stay true to the fact that you are the way maker and the miracle worker and that you have promises that you want to fulfill in their lives. And it starts now. Thank you for them looking to you. Encourage their parents and strengthen their parents, Lord, today to bring their children up in the admonition and the nurture of Jesus Christ. 
May we be the kind of role models that these children need and that these kids can look to us and say, I saw Jesus in those adults. I saw Jesus in my parents. Father God, I protect, ask that you would protect us from the, the lies and the schemes of Satan and that the peace that passes all understanding that you give will reign supreme within our hearts and lives. Calm us. Help us not to have fear or doubts in the next few weeks. And may these kids study hard at home, but have a great time hanging with their parents. We love you. Amen. Kids, I want to tell you real quickly, um, a while back, I told you that we were going to do some really cool stuff in February that we didn't get to do, but we are going to have that talent show. So keep working on your talents, because we'll probably have to do it in April. Okay? Right. Go be with Miss Hannah today. All right? Um, and Miss Tara. All right, go. See ya. <laughs> aren't they beautiful? We're so blessed, aren't we? To have the responsibility of instilling God's word into the the minds and the hearts of our children, and then to send them out and allow them the opportunity to, to be a light. You know, one definition of, uh, of hope is this, to look forward to with confidence or expectation. To look forward to with confidence or expectation. You know that, that when someone is hopeless, they're not looking forward to anything with confidence and expectation. You realize that, right? Have you ever, have you, has your path ever crossed with a person who is truly hopeless and has expressed that to you? In order for us to be the light and to, for us to shine and for, for us to instill hope, we have to bring the word of God we have to share with them the word of God because that is the provider of hope, right? That is the provider of hope. And, and for someone who doesn't have hope or know that hope is will, real, when we bring hope, we bring light. We help them to shine. We bring life because it's life-changing. God's word is life-changing, And we, can, and we could be the instruments that God uses to bring life, a life-changing moment into the life of someone who's hopeless. And it's, and it's more than just asking God for something we need because I know that we all do that so well, right? We're perfect at that. We need something to pray and ask God but to be the light that creates a life-changing moment is so much more than just asking God for something we need because it's a moment of hope. It's a moment of looking forward to, with confidence and expectation, a miracle. Because if a person is hopeless, And if your paths have, have crossed with someone who, who is in that state, then you know most times the only thing that could help them is a miracle. So in the midst of asking and believing and expecting God to answer, and through his word, is when we find what we're looking for. There's hope. Hmm. It's the only way to help someone out of a hopeless situation. There was a, there was a song back in the 80s by one of, my, 
one of my favorite bands of the 80s. It was a simple name. They were called U2. Anyone else my age ever heard of them? Well, they had a song that just said, still haven't found what I'm looking for. I used to love that song. I used to love to sing along with, with that band. I am so glad that I found what I'm looking for, that I found the light, I found the hope, the hope that only comes in Jesus Christ. That's what we can instill in our community and people that are feeling hopeless right now. Oh, amen, amen, and amen. Oh, God is so good, isn't he? God is so good. Aren't you glad that you came out and you're here today? I am still confident of this. Of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, Psalm 27, 13. You know, I kind of threw this at, at the worship team this morning. And I said, uh, hey, could you throw some extra songs in, in the mix? And, and uh, so any, anyone else, that may have been a surprise, but Adavi's used to me. So she, <laughs> not sure she was completely surprised, but oh my, we're so blessed, aren't we? We're so blessed that God has chosen and led this group to serve and ministry together. I've been in churches larger than this that don't have that. You know, I felt for a long time that one of the biggest problems in the world today is that, that there are so many people that are hopeless right? There just seems to be an overwhelming number of people that are hopeless because they're, they're, they're fighting so many hurts and problems and, and sickness troubles and financial situations and marital situations, relational problems. And now we have on top of that, well, the, the thing that we're all concerned about is the health and wellness of, of our world. Away from God, the world's a hopeless place. Away from God, the world is a hopeless place. But it is with his help and guidance that we can make it through any situation. This is nothing. Not that we need to ignore it, but God can give us hope. And you may not be able to see it or feel it, but it's there for all of us. And the only place that hope can be found is through Jesus Christ. Psalm 39, 7 says, but now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Psalm 42, 11, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed? Put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Savior and God. Trust God. He wants you to. Right? Trust God. He wants you to trust him. Don't feel disappointed and alone because we have hope in God. We have hope in God's word. I encourage you that during this time, during these times, these days ahead, these weeks ahead, these months ahead that, that are unknown, that to put your trust in God and know and look forward to and with great anticipation and faith that God is still alive and God still reigns and God still leads. Amen? Romans in chapter 5 says, and, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. 
Romans chapter 15 says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and the encouragement of the Scriptures, we might have what? Hope. Hope. That's so good, isn't it? That is so, so good. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's your need today? I know some of you have already come to pray, but I want to tell you, if, if, you have not, uh, if you have not prayed yet for some of the things that are in your, in your bulletin, if you've not prayed for our, our schools, if you've not prayed for our hospitals, if you've not prayed for doctors, if you've not prayed for pastors, if you've not prayed for community leaders, and all of those those people that are making decisions, if you've not done that yet, I encourage you in these next few minutes, would you come again? Would you pull out that bulletin and see that list? And if you've not done that yet, would you come again and pray? And the worship team is going to lead us. You guys have another song in your back pocket, another one or two? So we're going we're gonna to do a few more minutes here. All right. Um, but I, I, I encourage you to do that. Can we do that? And um, all right. invite them in. Invite them in. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Oh, he is so good. <laughs> My intent in coming in here today was to offer you hope, to offer you encouragement so that you could leave here and do the same for others. And I I trust that you've enjoyed our time together. Philippians chapter 4 says, do not be anxious about anything. Here's a good word for today. And we're going to close in just a few minutes. These guys have another song for us, but continue to come pray. Do not be anxious about anything. That's hard, isn't it? It's hard not to be anxious. I was anxious when I, when I walked in here today. But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Colossians 4, chapter 2 says, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, be joyful always and pray continually. Why? Because God hears us. God hears us. Psalm 34, 17, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. Hmm. How's that for a promise? And he delivers them from all their troubles. There you go, friends. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. We close with this one. Is this a good? The, your next one? Can we? We'll close with this song. Okay. All right. We're going to close with this one. If you want to come pray, please come pray. I want to remind you that that did you have more? I oh, will keep going. You're looking at me like, this is it? You have one more after this? Well, let's do it. No, not after. Just one. Just one. Okay. I just want to make sure. So to clarify that, you know, because I saw some communication going on, like maybe they had like three more, and I'm like, okay. Well, I'm, I'll stay. What about you guys? You all good? I don't think anybody's in a hurry to leave anywhere. Uh, it's good. Let's pray together. Did you know that the early church was committed and devoted to prayer? Did you know that often 
we say that, that prayer is a part of our lives. How many of you say that prayer is a part of your life? Right? Did you know that the early church, prayer was their life? What if it was our life? Be the hope that this community needs right now. All right? Be part of the church that shines. Find out what some needs are and serve. Look around and see who's not here and call them up and say, what, what, what do you need? What can I do for you? Father, we thank you for this beautiful time of worship that, and, and prayer and scripture and words of encouragement that you've been able to, to give to each one of us today. So our, our prayer is that as we leave this place, may we not leave the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, would you encourage us, strengthen us, give us wisdom to go from this place and to be the light and to offer to offer hope to those that are hopeless, to be able to offer to someone that, they, that there is the ability to look forward with confidence and expe expectation through the hope that comes through Jesus Christ and the word of God. Help us to be that. Help us to be able to proclaim hope is real. It's not just a word but it's something that's real and tangible that only comes through our Lord and Savior. Give us the courage to step out of our box and to show that hope to the people of, of, of not only this church, but the people of this community. And thank you, thank you for the opportunity to be here and to worship and to pray. God, you are so good. You are so good. We will forever worship and praise and give you honor and all of God's people said, amen, amen. Thank you for being here. I hope you've been encouraged today. I hope that we've been able to to just pass on the hope that only comes through Jesus Christ. Go forth and serve, all right? All right, I love you all. If you have any questions about what's going on in the church, what's coming up in the church, please feel free to reach out. Call the church office, uh, call, text, email, uh, whatever's most convenient, and, and we'll try to respond uh, accordingly and, and as quickly as as we can, um, but hang in there with us. Know that you know, we're not perfect. We're trying to maneuver these waters just like everyone else is. All right. All hearts clear? Okay. Fathers, we leave this place. May we not leave your presence. Continue to guide and direct each person, each family, each man, woman, husband, wife, and child that's in this room today. Help us to speak with vision and clarity and, and to communicate the hope that only comes through you. In your precious name, amen. You are dismissed.